everyone. Welcome to an episode that will deal with composition and mechanics of writing. We will learn about composition and mechanics of writing and their importance. In order to understand the importance of this topic in English grammar, an attempt will be made to discuss it intensively. I am Sakshi Mandwal and our subject expert today is Vasundra Gautam. This lesson will help the students to enable them to understand the difference between spoken and written English. Facilitate them to learn about some basic rules of writing, parts of speech, punctuations, capitalization, etc. Enable them by showing ways to improve and enhance their writing skills. In this episode, we will learn about writing. We will also briefly discuss about nouns, pronouns, verbs, etc. You have done this in the earlier episodes, so this will be a brief introduction to refresh your memory. It is true that to understand the intricacies of a language, one needs to have knowledge of its grammar. Grammar teaches us the basic rules of a language. It helps us to understand the basic structure. For example, to learn the sentence structure in Hindi, one needs to learn the Vyakaran or grammar of Hindi language. Similarly, grammar helps to understand and learn the basic structures of a language. The base is important for the understanding of the larger structures sentence structures in a language. Students should also understand that the writing style of one person will be different from the other person. It not only depends on the vocabulary of the person and also how often he or she adds words to their vocabulary. It also depends on the practice of writing. The practice of adding words to one's vocabulary and writing enhances and improves the style of writing. All the writers are into habit of writing and in order to produce good books, they never stop practicing. They are good writers because they have achieved the mastery of using words in the correct place and context. The difference between spoken and written English. There is a substantial amount of difference between spoken English and written English. While speaking, whether for official or unofficial reasons, the speaker uses his or her face expressions, gestures, tone, etc., which is absent in written form. Speaking becomes easier with the help of body language. For most of the people who are introvert or unable to express themselves properly, body language while speaking supports them to a great extent. For example, when one person is surprised or thrilled or angry or horrified, the look on the face can express the feeling. Without words, one could understand the feelings of the other person. In the smile chart, all the smiles are giving a different reaction to different situations. The first smile is representing a person who is speechless. The second one is happy or blissful and the third one is sad. Similarly, other smiles are expressing different feelings. These smiles show us that without words, one could express in an alternative way. Here are more examples of spoken English. Hi, what's up? What's going on? Just kidding. What's the matter? Is everything all right? Just maintain your cool. What are you up to? We are hitting the road. Hey, how have you been? These are some of the examples which are generally not used for writing purposes. They are conversational phrases. When I say generally, not that means that they could be used given the novel or the short story is set in contemporary times. We generally do not find use of such words in books written in earlier times. Writing is altogether a different process. Expressing oneself through body language is not possible when one writes. Writing is a more sophisticated process. The writer has to pen down all his thoughts, expressions and his or her ideas on the paper. He has to think properly and then put them in paper with careful arrangement of things. He works hard to write in pleasant and appealing language. After the writing is over, the interpretation of the writing piece is dependent on the reader. For example, the canker of suspicion was rooted out only when I understood Ahinsa in all its bearings. I saw then the glory of Brahmacharya and realized that the wife is not the husband's born slave but his companion and his helpmate and an equal partner in all his joys and sorrows, as free as the husband to choose her own path. Whenever I think of those dark days of doubts and suspicions, I am filled with loathing of my folly and my lustful cruelty, and I deplore my blind devotion to my friend. 
an autobiography or the story of my experiments with truth mohandas karamchand gandhi this extract is taken from mahatma gandhi's autobiography here he is expressing his thoughts on the relationship of a husband and wife he also discusses the concept of equality which he only understood after he himself understood the meaning of ahimsa in order to write and explain what he meant the speaker or writer chose his words carefully so that the reader could understand how he that is a writer understands ahimsa himself as mentioned in the beginning that to understand the language one needs to learn the grammar here is a brief introduction to some grammatical concepts essential for the writing purpose parts of speech words are divided into different kinds or classes called parts of speech according to their use that is according to the work they do in a sentence the parts of speech are eight in number noun adjective pronoun verb adverb preposition conjunction interjection noun noun is a part of speech that can be used as the name of a person place animal or thing for example the prime minister of india is shri narendra modi the sun rises in the east roses are red pride and prejudice is my favorite book i have studied in delhi university i live in a locality named civil lines ravi is my best friend tiger is a majestic animal in the first sentence india which is the name of a country and narendra modi which is the name of a person are proper nouns similarly like these common or proper nouns can be identified easily adjective an adjective is a part of speech used to add something to the meaning of a noun examples he is a naughty boy she is a fat girl robin is the topper of the class i have a beautiful garden in front of my house the dress of my barbie doll glitters there is a huge swimming pool in that hotel the quality of this paint is bad in the first sentence the word naughty is adding a quality to a particular boy in a similar manner words like fat topper beautiful etc are adding meaning to noun or pronoun in the respective sentences pronoun pronoun is a word used instead of a noun examples sita is not well this is why she is not coming to the class raja works in a factory where he gets minimum wages akbar was a mughal king he married a hindu princess tarun lives in goa he has a beach house there the chair is a sturdy construction it is made of wood kishore has to study hard so that he can pass the exam with good marks in the first sentence we have used the word she instead of using sita again and again similarly in the other sentences words like he it have been used in places of nouns verb her verb is used to express an action or state examples she wrote a letter to me the dogs were running behind the bus delhi is the capital of india i broke my glasses i was so thirsty that i drank all the water the teacher scolded him for his untidy uniform hanging at the bus doors can be very dangerous in the above sentences words like wrote running is broke drank scolded hanging are showing an action occurrence or a state of being in their respective sentences adverb an adverb is a word used to add something to the meaning of a verb an adjective or another adverb examples he completed the task quickly he runs very fast we got late because he walks very slowly this tulip is very beautiful nasiruddin shah is a good actor you simply don't want to understand i can't stay here any longer in the first sentence the task has been completed quickly hence it speaks something about the verb similarly verbs like past good simply are adverbs as they add meaning to verbs adjectives or another adverb preposition a preposition is a word used with a noun or a pronoun to show how the person or thing denoted by the noun or pronoun stands in relation to something else examples he is sitting on the chair avinash and karan are sitting under the tree she is in the train the bus drowned in the river the river mahananda is in north bengal 
the sky is above us. In the first sentence, somebody is sitting on the chair, not under the chair, but on it. The word is used to show how he is placed on the chair. Similarly, in the other sentences, words like in, under, over, etc. are showing noun or pronouns relationship with other words in the sentences. Conjunction. A conjunction is a word used to join words or sentences. Examples. Ram and Raghu are traveling together. He is sad because he failed in the exam. They were on time but because of traffic jam, they missed the flight. Kauravs and Pandavas fought in the war of Kurukshetra. Shahid wants to pursue engineering because he is good in maths. Honesty and betrayal cannot exist together. In the first sentence, two names Raghu and Ram have been joined by the word and. It can also help to join two phrases or clauses by using words like and, because, etc. Interjection. An interjection is a word which expresses some sudden feeling. Examples. Alas! He is dead. Woohoo! We won the match. Hooray! I cracked the IAS exam. Yay! I won a trip to the United States. Oh, that was very close. Ouch! That hurts a lot. Oh no! That came so suddenly. In these sentences, expressions like ouch, alas, woohoo, hooray have been used to express different human emotions which comes out suddenly. In this section, we have learnt about the parts of speech are essential for learning to write. In the upcoming section, we will learn about some spelling rules as they are also equally important for learning. <music> spelling rules. Learning spelling rules is important and necessary because it is also an important part of writing. When the last letter is a consonant, one syllable word ending in a single vowel plus single consonant, double the consonant before a suffix beginning with a vowel. Examples, beg plus ed is equal to bed. Run plus ing is equal to running. Words of two or three syllables ending in a single vowel plus single consonant, double the final consonant if the last syllable is stressed. Example, begin plus ing is equal to beginning. Permit plus ed is equal to permitted. In British English, the consonant is doubled even if the stress does not fall on the last syllable. Example, quarrel plus ed is equal to quarreled. Travel plus er is equal to traveller. If the word to which the suffix full is added and it ends in double l, the second l is dropped. Example, skill plus ful is equal to skillful. Will plus ful is equal to willful. Words ending in silent e dropped the e before a suffix beginning with a vowel. Examples, live plus ing is equal to living. Move plus ed is equal to moved. Notice the special case of words ending in ce and ge which keep the e when we add able and ous. Examples, notice plus able is equal to noticeable. Courage plus ous is equal to courageous. Words ending in ee do not drop an e before a suffix. Example, c plus ing is equal to seeing. Agree plus meant is equal to agreement. Words ending in ie changes to y when ing is added. Example, die plus ing is equal to dying. Tie plus ing is equal to tying. A final y following a consonant changes to i before a suffix except ing. Example, happy plus ly is equal to happily. Marry plus age is equal to marriage, with Y following a vowel does not change. Example, pray plus ed is equal to prayed. When I, E or EI is pronounced like EE -E in Jeep, I comes before E after C. Example, believe, relieve, note. Some exceptions are also there. C is protein, weird. Punctuations. Punctuations also play a very important part in the process of writing. If they are used properly, they can make perfect sense and if used improperly, they can spoil the piece of writing as well. Different punctuation marks. Full stop. The full stop represents the greatest pause and separation. It is used to mark the end of a declarative or an imperative sentence. Examples. I have nothing new to teach the world. 
truth and non-violence are as old as the hills. The full stop can be used in abbreviations, but they are often omitted in modern style. Example, m.a or ma, m.p or mp. Comma. The comma represents the shortest pause and it is used to separate a series of words in the same construction. Example, England, France and Italy formed an alliance. To separate each pair of words connected by and, example, we should be devout and humble, cheerful and serene. After a nominative absolute, example, the wind being favourable, the squadron sailed. To mark off a noun or phrase in a position, example, Milton, the great English poet, was blind. To mark off words used in addressing people. Example, how are you, Mohan? To mark off two or more adverbs or adverbial phrases coming together. Example, then at length, tardy justice was done to the memory of Oliver. Before and after a participial phrase, provided that the phrase might be expanded into a sentence and is not used in a merely qualifying sense. Example, Caesar, having conquered his enemies, returned to Rome. Before and after words, phrase or clauses, let into the body of a sentence. Example, he did not, however, gain his object. To indicate the omission of a word, especially a verb. Example, he will succeed, you, never. To separate short coordinate clauses of a compound sentence. Example, I came, I saw, I conquered. To mark off or direct quotation from the rest of the sentence. Example, exactly so, said Alice. Before certain coordinative conjunctions. Example, to act thus is not wisdom, but folly. To separate from the verb a long sentence opening a sentence. Example, all that we admired and adored before as great and magnificent is obliterated or banished. To separate a noun clause with a subject or object preceding the verb. Example, whatever is, is right. To separate a clause that is not restrictive in meaning, but is coordinate with the principal clause. Example, sailors who are generally superstitious say it is unlucky to embark on a Friday. To separate an adverbial clause from its principal clause. Example, when I was a bachelor, I lived by myself. All the other given examples are explaining the different uses of comma. Semicolon. The semicolon represents a pause of greater importance than that shown by the comma. It is used to a to separate the clauses of compound sentences when they contain a comma and b to separate a series of loosely related clauses. Example, my wife would like tea. I would prefer coffee. I went to the school but it was closed. Colon. The colon marks a still more complete pause than that expressed by a semicolon. It is used to a introduce a quotation, b before enumeration, example, etc. and c between sentences grammatically independent but closely connected in sense. Examples, I had a rough weekend. I had chest pain on Saturday and spent my Sunday at a hospital. Ravi could not speak. He was ill. Question mark. The question mark is used instead of the full stop after a direct question. It is used when we ask something. Examples. Where had you been all this time? Why are you always late for the classes? Exclamation mark. The exclamation mark is used after interjections and after phrases and sentences expressing sudden emotion or wish. Examples. Hooray! I have topped in the exams. Alas! His father died in the accident. Inverted commas, single, double. The inverted commas are used to enclose the exact words of a speaker or a quotation. Examples, I told you to bring a red colored dress. Then why did you bring a yellow colored one? My friend has a brown colored spaniel dog. Dash. The dash is used A to indicate an abrupt stop or change of thought and B to resume a scattered subject. Example, if my husband were alive, but why lament the past? Hyphen. The hyphen is a shorter line than the dash is used to connect the parts of a compound word. Examples. Passerby. Men of war. Parenthesis or double dashes are used to separate from the main part of the sentence a phrase or clause which does not grammatically belong to it. Examples. He gained from heaven. It was all he wished. A friend.
A remarkable instance of this kind of courage call it, if you please, resolute will is given in the history of Babur. Apostrophe, it is used to A, to show the omission of a letter or letters, B, in the genitive case of nouns, and C, to form the plural of letters and figures. Example, don't, I've. Capitalization. Capitalization is writing a word with its first letter as a capital letter or uppercase letter and the remaining letters in lowercase. This of course only applies to those writing systems which have a case distinction. The term is also used for the distinction of the first word of a sentence. Apart from the first letter of a sentence, the proper nouns like names of persons, places are also capitalized. For example, the plague I felt was sufficient notice to quit Kocharab. Punjab Bhai Hirachand, a merchant in Ahmedabad, had come in close contact with the ashram and used to serve us in a number of matters in a pure and selfless spirit. He had a wide experience of things in Ahmedabad and he volunteered to procure us suitable land. I went about with him north and south of Kosharab in search of land and then suggested to him to find out a piece of land three or four miles to the north. He hit upon the present site. Its vicinity to Sabarmati Central Jail was for me a special attraction. As jail going was understood to be the normal lot of Satyagrahis, I liked this position. And I knew that the sites selected for jails have generally clean surroundings. An autobiography or story of my experiments with truth, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. All the capitalized words in the passage are either proper nouns or starting the sentence. In the context of composition, we need to understand the importance of capitalization. Capitalization refers to the use of capital letter in the sentences. Usually we do so whenever there is a beginning of a sentence. For example, there is a sentence, he is running. So in this sentence, he, the word he has to have that capital letter H, he. Apart from the beginning of the sentence, we also use capitalization in case of proper noun or the words which stand for names. For example, the name Ram, Shyam, Mita, Gita, Rita. So wherever they are, even if they are not in the beginning of sentences, they have to have capitalization. They have to begin with capital letter. This is done to, in the case of the sentences, it is done to individuate or differentiate a sentence from the other sentences, but in the case of names, it is done to signify the identity of the person. So that is about capitalization. Abbreviations. An abbreviation is a shortened form of a word or a phrase. It has been derived from the Latin word brevis meaning short. Usually, but not always, it consists of a letter or a group of letters taken from the word or phrase. A very common example of abbreviation is TV, whose full form is television. Other examples? DR for doctor, MR for mister, ETC for etc, PROF for professor, EG for examples, IE for that is. Similarly, there are many other abbreviations which are used in books. Sometimes some abbreviations are particular to some cultural context. In that case, the abbreviations are either given in the starting of the book or at the end. Like MS for manuscript, OP for opus, PP for pages. Abbreviation refers to shortening of the words. In case of abbreviation, we shorten the words so, so as to make them memorable or easily speakable. For example, there is the word television, which is usually known as TV. There are also examples like Mr, which is written as MR, Doctor, which is written as DR, Professor, which is written as PROF. So, in that way, we have so many other instances. Apart from these, there could be the examples like USA, standing for United States of America. USSR standing for Un United Soviet Socialist Republic, UNO standing for United Nations Organization. So in that way, abbreviation works as a breeze between 
longer sentences, shorter sentences and we try to make them useful. Unity, coherence and emphasis. Unity, coherence and emphasis, all the three components are very important things while writing. It provides an answer to any piece of writing, a stream of thoughts and helps in the logical progression of ideas. For a good writing piece, there should be a beginning, introduction, middle, body of the work or argument and ending, conclusion. The main points should be argued properly, that is, one should give proper reasoning for the stand one has taken. Structure of argument should be properly thought out and coherent. There should be a careful selection of the material that is relevant for the writing. Conclusion In this episode, we have learned about the composition and mechanics of writing. It is a process during which people learn to write. In this episode, the student should understand that writing is not like mathematics. One cannot learn it in one day. Good writing comes with time and practice. In order to develop good writing skills, it is necessary to mix ideas and with the structured arrangement of rules. But in order to understand the basic structures of language and writing, one needs to understand grammar. In this episode, we have learned about grammar briefly and also about the punctuation, spellings, capitalization, etc. In today's session, we have learned about to understand the difference between spoken and written English, facilitate them to learn about some basic rules of writing, parts of speech, punctuations, capitalization, etc. Enable them by showing ways to improve and enhance their writing skills. That is all that we had for you for today. We hope you enjoyed the session. See you again. Till then, thank you and Namaskar.